Look at this picture. You are looking at a typical American car, at least at first sight. In fact, this is a notoriously unsafe Chevrolet Corvair, a Chevrolet made for 10 years, from 1959 to 1969. The car was known for being extremely unsafe. The fact that it could flip over at any bad turn and was prone to excessive skidding. This was due to the design of the car. This is what remains on the surface. In fact, everything is much deeper and more interesting. In this video, we will try to explain where exactly in the design there was a miscalculation, what was happening during turning, and what journalism has to do with it. Chevrolet Corvair – Why Did It Roll Over? General Motors was already one of the major manufacturers of American cars at the time of the early 50s. Their Chevrolet Corvette was one of the best American models. However, it was beginning to lag behind its European counterparts both in design and in power in its price segment. The rear-mounted engine was rapidly gaining popularity, and Germany's Volkswagen introduced the legendary Volkswagen Beetle, famous for its easy handling, low price, and reliability. The Chevrolet Corvair was conceived as the American answer to the appearance and growing popularity of these rear-engined models, and it was intended to respond to both compact cars and European sports cars, which in those years were the Volkswagen Beetle or Porsche models. The design of the car was invented in the late 50s, and in 1959, the car was already on sale. This answers the question of why the rear-engine layout was chosen. It was a revolutionary car for America. It had to be a competitive solution. The Corvair had to be a car that combined features of both common passenger cars and sports models, so its design was similar to the lightweight Volkswagen Kefir. But it weighed an impressive amount and had an equally impressive engine volume. It was also due to the fact that Americans were not interested in compact, low-power cars. They needed a big interior for the whole family and the Corvair provided it. The main thing is that it cost less than $2,000, which in the first year ensured sales of over 200,000 copies. As a result, thanks to these features, it could accelerate to high speeds, which of course overshadowed its European counterparts, but unlike them, it was very dangerous when cornering at high speeds. All generations of Chevrolet Corvair were the versions of the single base, with an air-cooled, rear-mounted six-cylinder engine. Simply, it was an engine with the cylinders arranged horizontally. This was very unusual and new at the time. It had a trans-axle transmission. It is the type of transmission where the gearbox and the main gear are in one case. The model also had independent suspension of all wheels. The rear axle, or beam, to which the rear wheels were attached, took more than 60% of the weight. The engine was very flat and low located, which allowed creating cargo passenger versions, vans, even pickups on its base. Engine displacement varied from generation to generation, but never went under two liters, and most often stayed at two and a half. The engines were very powerful, producing up to 80 horsepower. There was also a turbo version, which could give 180 horsepower. But it is not necessary to know more about characteristics. First of all, the main peculiarity interesting to us is the danger of this car. The young man you see in the video may be said to have personally organized the funeral of the Chevrolet Corvair. Of course, jokes about its excessive lack of control have been around for a long time, but the journalist took it extremely seriously. His name is Ralph Nader, and he wrote an investigative journalism book that changed the world. It came out in 1965 and was called Unsafe at Any Speed. It was one of the first studies to deal with car safety. It described the dangerous design practices of certain American cars, among which was the Chevrolet Corvair. Now, it was put in front and center under Ralph's attack. The book had a great residence in the US of those years and publicized the very problem of safety on the roads. It consists of eight chapters. The first chapter was entirely devoted to the car we are considering. 
Ralph Nader compared the car with its European counterparts and came to very depressing conclusions. It was he who said that the model was uncontrollable, prone to accidents and overturns. He blamed everything on the car manufacturers, pointing out that it was almost deliberate negligence to safety, to the car, and to the consumer. Interestingly, his conclusions were speculative. He was not a scientist or engineer, only a journalist, and he had never, up to a certain point, gotten behind the wheel of a car. However, if you want the full story of the book and how it affected and changed the world, write us about it in the comments. There were two aspects to it. First, it was the human factor. American drivers didn't know the peculiarities of driving rear-engine cars, where, as we said earlier, 60% of the weight was on the rear axle of the car. Because of this, cars built this way were always prone to oversteer and, as a result, were hard to drive. It required very quick and clear reactions from the driver. Also important was the fact that the rear wheels were always supposed to be inflated more than the front, and it was often overlooked. The low price was a factor, too. The car was available to almost everyone. Students, housewives, and inexperienced drivers could afford it. What was happening was that these people were buying a car which was cheap, which required a lot of experience, and a driver who could handle it. Many accidents happened because of this. Secondly, the design of the model was also to blame. The rear suspension was imperfect, cheapened as much as possible, and the Corvair had wobbly half-axles at the rear. As you can understand, that very beam was not joined together. Its halves were simply attached to one joint, at the bearing, and moved separately, and there was simply no stabilization of any kind something that would bring the wheels to the same level. It's not a new concept. It's been used in many cars. But you have to understand that it hadn't been applied like that anywhere else. The manufacturer wanted to achieve comfort at high speed. The car weighed too much, so it was forbidden to accelerate to high speeds with this design. It was also forbidden to go into corners at high speed, because the inner tire would loosen up and the lever would give it lift. The outer wheel, on the other hand, would start to bend and break at the joint. If, at that moment, you braked hard, there would be a force that would lift the car with almost a 100% chance. And, very importantly, the car had no anti-roll bar on the rear axle. It only cost $15. However, the company wanted to create a cheap car, so they decided to save money on that. Of course, it was possible to add it, but it was an optional package, and not many people knew about it. To their great regret, it wasn't even mentioned in the advertising brochure. It wasn't mentioned anywhere. Many European cars of the time had the same suspension, but they were low weight had no ability to reach high speed, which made them much easier to drive and much safer. All these reasons combined to create such a great danger of overturning, which repeatedly led to victims. There were many lawsuits filed against the company before the book was even released, and the Chevrolet Corvair was involved in so many accidents on the road. None of this escaped the attention of the curious and sharp-tongued Ralph Nader, and it was all covered in his resonant investigation. The book, as expected, had a great resonance. The authorities even reacted to it, but that's in another video. Now, we are much more interested in the reaction of the company that produced the Corvair, Chevrolet. They were furious. That is the only way to characterize their behavior and strategy. There was no room for a cold and reasoned response. Instead of destroying their opponent with direct evidence because he made many blunders from the technical point of view, which is understandable because the man did not know much about cars, GM went the other way. They tried to discredit him and ruin his reputation. They hired a private investigator and began following him and listening to his phone calls, trying to ferret out information about him that would destroy his career. 
thus marking the book as a complete lie. General Motors sought denunciatory facts about his biography and the media poured in devastating articles, which, of course, had no effect. General Motors even hired girls who pretended to be prostitutes and flirted with Nader. However, Nader proved smarter than his rivals. He quickly found out that he was being followed and sued General Motors for invasion of privacy and through a lawsuit won half a million dollars and the company publicly apologized to him. The main thing that doesn't fit with this whole case is that whatever life Nader led, it didn't change the fact that the book was true. At least General Motors itself did nothing to disprove it. That was even more damaging to their reputation and to the reputation of the automobile. The book, Unsafe at Any Speed, created a horrendous negative background for a car that already had far from the cleanest of reputations. Lawsuits from car owners poured in in unbelievable numbers. They blamed Chevrolet for withholding important information and for low quality of the product. The last straw was a recent accident in which a popular American comedian named Ernie Kovacs crashed. He was driving a Corvair. General Motors had no time to fend off attacks and accusations in its direction. As a result, it was forced to pay compensation to all the victims and urgently fix all the defects of the car. The same year, the rear suspension was completely redesigned. The arm kinematics were corrected the Corvair began to be fitted with a more expensive and advanced circuit from the Chevrolet Corvette sports car. But people did not want to forget the grand scandal that was connected with Nader. The car sales were rapidly declining. Previously, 250,000 cars had been sold per year, but now just over 27,000 were sold. The car's popularity dropped tenfold. The car reputation was irrevocably ruined. It wasn't selling anymore. In such a case, General Motors was able to make only one solution, the only right one. After 10 years of production and record sales, the Chevrolet Corvair was phased out. But this was not the end of the story. Two years later, after the Corvair was no longer in production, the National Transportation Safety Board tested several cars, including the Corvair. More precisely, two of them. The first was the one of the dangerous suspension, which came out until 1967. The other was a modernized and improved version, which came out after the Great Scandal. The conclusions were unexpected. The old Chevrolet Corvair withstood comparisons with its peers, its stability and handling did not cause an abnormally high tendency to lose control and roll over, and was at least not worse than the other cars used in the tests. This conclusion completely contradicts Nader's claims and essentially trashes his investigation, at least regarding this car. However, a former top manager of General Motors by the name of John DeLorean said that the criticism of the handling of the model was fully justified, and if you ask the engineers about this type of suspension, they will answer that the kinematics of this scheme in combination with a weighted rear end does not work best, and since then, this scheme has never been used in automobile construction. After this big scandal, very strict safety standards were introduced in the USA. Items such as a contoured braking system, seat belts, soft interior trim, telescopic steering pad, and head restraints became mandatory in cars. Safety in American cars was now taken to a new level, several times higher than before, all thanks to one car model alone, a model that revolutionized first technically, and then in terms of safety. It was after the Corvair that people began to pay more attention not to speed and car design, but to personal safety and reliability, to the certainty that in the first accident they will not die. There are still debates about the Chevrolet Corvair. Most people remember this car as one of the most dangerous models in history. 
Some people paid attention to the tests that were done after the car was discontinued. Some people think that the scandal broke out fairly. Others think that the car fell the victim of conspiracy and someone's personal gain. It seems to us that the truth will be somewhere in the middle, as it usually happens in such situations. Nader's approach was characterized by radicalism, which in this case too was very far from the truth. But the Chevrolet Corvair certainly played its part. It became the car that divided the whole industry into before and after phases.